This is your daily market recap for Monday, July 25th, 2022. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is my channel to help investors and traders develop a probability-based mindset to succeed. Also try and keep friends informed of what's going on in the markets and the economy, and also a little real estate content as well. This is Dan Max at XP Realty, aka The Trading Agent, and this is your daily market recap for Monday, July 25th, 2022. Hopefully you're having another amazing day, following the channel, paying attention, learning, studying, doing all the things needed to be a great trader. Again, you just don't show up and win. If I give you a basketball, you're not going to be able to go out there and beat anybody. You have to learn how to trade. It's no different than anything else, and it is a skill. Again, this channel is built around giving people the skills to manufacture great wins and how to just trade better. So on that note, I hope this helps. Let's get into it. If you are not a member of the Discord room and you are following these trades, I don't know what you're doing. You should be joining Discord, create a Discord. I am 40 chain. Four, I'm, four, I'm not going to give away my age. I'm very old. <laughs> but I created a Discord account and created this. It's not rocket science. I Trust me, you can figure out how to get on this platform. <laughs> get into it. Bitcoin. What did we say last week? We said you need to get away from this range. You need to continue higher. It is backed off. The volume is lighter. I really don't have much to say on it. I, If you bought this, please, 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 please roll up your stops. Do not just hold this endlessly hoping for YOLOing 60,000. Like it's going to be traded. It's no different than what we talk about with gold. These, all this stuff is actually probably going to go lower in the fall. It's due to bounce, but it's not the time. It's just not the time to buy and hold. We're in a trader's market. I would say this every day. Please, it's a trader's market. Please, it's a trader's market. On that note, finish my coffee. Let's get into it. Oil said this oh, many times. It's really hard to show it oil if natural gas is holding up. Well, what did we notice about natural gas? It is holding up well. We'll go into that later. What did we say? Seems to be that, hey, cat, we are holding this, you know, mid, mid to low 90s, 93, 94, 95 range. As much as I would like to see oil go down, 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 I don't think it's ready yet. Just keep that in mind, please. Please, 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 please. Do not heavily invest in shorting oil just now. A lot of people, you know, since we did earlier, are just sticking to that trade. And it's like, you have to know when a trade is not in your favor. TLT, nice little gap down, close at the high of the day, decent volume. Uh, P-Bird was buying it today under 117, nice trade. I was a little distracted by some of the metal stuff. I dig it. Check out the uh, after hour, like the close. Hey, -oh, somebody was buying the tittle, tittle, TLT. At this point, again, I've said the market's going to start pricing in a recession. You know, even though the <laughs> administration wants to change the definition, the market ain't going to The market knows what the definition of a recession is. Anyway, long story short, we've said 120s minimum. Maybe we get up. I don't know. It really just depends. You've got your target here near term. Could TLT go much higher? I mean, I would not be surprised. But I'm going to trust in what? The charting in the near term. I reviewed this again in 2000. Here you go in 2008. Here was 2007. You had a rates, you know, TLT climb. Then you had a back off in the fall. And here, I think we're here. We're just in this little bounce in chop mode until what? Smash factor and TLT goes much higher. And the feds announce a recession and they start cutting rates and yada, yada, yada. We're in this building process to probably pop. Now, it doesn't mean, again, see, look at that. It went, here, let me zoom in for you guys. Because, again, we always do our homework. We study we study the past. We're not new. You had a 89, and you got a nice pop-up to 100, you know, 10, 15% move in the bond market. I ultimately think, though, this fall is going to be rather silly because, again, the feds are, you're going to see like that, they know nothing, Kramer going crazy, raising rates into a recession. You guys are idiots, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Well, it's called raising rates into stagflation. And I think they're kind of stuck at this point, you know? It's not like they can fix the bottlenecks in Europe, oil and gas. They can't fix the food bottlenecks, you know, food supply. I mean, none of this stuff is fixable from the Fed. The Feds cannot fix stuff by printing money. You've got to build incentives to get people back to work. 
If we had the previous administration, they would probably be slapping everybody who wasn't getting back to work. This administration clearly doesn't care if people do anything at this point. Guy gets sick and just wants to hang out in the basement. That's his job. He really doesn't have any leadership. Let's just call it what it is. The VIX. Notice that the retest of the range lows is what? Potentially lining up with this wick from Friday. Now what? Mm, again, I think we're going to go lower in time. I think the Feds are going to, you know, the way that the Fed action works is, what, you're probably going to kill some of the volatility. It just, that's what they do. I remember, here you go, this is the Fed spike, and then boink. Do we get a spike, markets drop kind of thing? Ugh. I don't know. It's really hard because back then, the Feds were a total wild card. Now, if you go look at the Fed fund futures, I mean, it's literally guaranteed they're raising 75 basis points. If somehow they do less than that, holy crap, market could rally short term. Again, they're still stuck. It's just a matter of how stuck will they be and what will they do to react. At this point, there's nothing I would say other than look for the low of the range range, and it's going to be short time for tech in August. Tech short in August, set your reminder. August 1st, which it's funny, the last day of the month ends on a Friday, usually bearish. Again, I, I mean, whatever I end up doing, it might be only a couple days. Please take note of that. You know, we're talking about buying miners. Well, if the market gets smoked later, miners are going to get smoked. Doesn't necessarily mean they're going to like tank like some of the other parts of the market, but they might not hold up. Gold probably could rally. It, it could get a little buggy. And when I say buggy, meaning the summer choppiness, you know, not lack of follow, lack of follow through great amounts of instability markets just chopping your face off and when i say chopping it your face off literally like just ugh, endless chop 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 now what oh boy the spy man we got lucky calling the top and selling out last week on thursday for the most part i told everyone just to take your profits it's just a, a feel thing going into the feds now again i am not at the point where i'm bearish or bullish i'm trying to stay neutral and this is the key to trading is always being neutral like again i can be bullish but neutral what do we know again i think the vix could go lower the market should go higher the more this is the hardest part about trading is you've had a significant nice pop right you went from three 30 points here's another 30 points right do the math risk versus reward Again, if the market pulls back, I will buy dips. If it runs higher, I'm just going to short it <laughs> when it gets to levels that I think are short based on the action. This in-between zone is where a lot of traders get screwed. They don't take the profits. And if the market tanks, they're screwed. And if it goes higher, you know, they're okay. So, and, and, and again, that's where it's a probability game. At this point, the probabilities are 50-50. Well, when it gets that bad, in my opinion, I'd rather just move to cash because what has happened previously and prior, again, I'm still bullish. I think the market will rise on bad news because the market's going to like bad news. It's going to get the feds to do what? Less, ideally. We'll see if that happens or not. But I've been stuck trying to like get that extra few points, and then what? You miss the exit, and then it just turns against you, and you go, well, I don't know what to do here. And that's what happens. That is what absolutely happens. Again, we're waiting for the novice gap, but I don't know if it's a gap from lower. I mean, we, we just don't know. Again, we're probability based. We're running this like a business. We're not sitting here assuming certainties. QQQ, not surprised it backed off. We talked about this getting up into the 300s. Probably needed a little break. And then you watch what happened to Snap. And then you happen to some of the other tech names. You're not surprised it's pulling back. Now, again, the volume isn't telling you it's game over. Oh, what's up, Cat? You're back. I think you can draw some little trend lines. If you get back down to the 287s, yeah. And now again, can you get that severe a drop? I don't know. I, I, I really don't. Do you see how once the easy money is made, it's just so much easier to sit on the sidelines and people are like, oh, you're going to miss out. And it's like, no, I didn't miss out because I banked profits. I'm doing well. And I don't know. I just don't know. Nobody can tell you they know what for sure is going to happen. I do know this. Retail is absolutely bearish monstrous bearish like they're just assuming the feds are going to crash the market on wednesday you know how that usually resolves uh -uh, wrong it's probably not going to happen so just keep that in mind now what with iwm said i think we're going to get the channel highs at some point is it guaranteed no 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 
but probabilities are there, right? Probably somewhere in the 187, 186, well, I don't know, the channel keeps descending. Doesn't mean you can't blow above it. Just keep all this in mind. Like, there's trades out here. You are not married to either direction right now. You can trade either direction, ironically, but I would be, I'd have a tendency to stay away from shorting because, again, what does the market like to do during earnings in July? It likes to rise. Earnings is typically bullish. Just keep that in mind. When the CEO is going to come out and say, world's ending, we suck, we can't make money. Well, think about all the performance of people on the board and the CEO. It's based on how well the stock does. Let's get into gold because this is where it's going to get real, real interesting. All right, gold futures, bottom, 1680, which is approximately in the 157s. What did we say? Well, we wanted to wait. We wanted to wait. Now you need to get back over this 160 area. Now, does this feel like a bear trap? Near term, you had a double bottom. I, mm, This is where it gets real hard. We don't know. We don't know. But we do know some action in the miners. That's given us some clues. Same thing with silver. Now, this is now here. Again, we're putting the evidence together. Silver typically likes to lead if you're going to get a good gold silver miners move, right? Does that make sense? It typically leads, right? The miners should lead. It's the same thing like XOP leading oil. XOP went absolutely ape not as oil was rising, right? We need to see the miners lead. We need to see silver, another corollary. It's kind of like nat gas for oil and gas compared to each other. Like nat gas is the crazy sister of oil. Silver is the crazy sister of gold. Well, what happened? You fill the gap and you retested the 1690s. See what happens. Now again, long wick closed. Okay. Looks bullish. GDX said lay off of this one. Lay, lay, lay off of it. Well, GDX, we need to talk about that because it actually might be a buy. Whoa, 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 what are you saying? It's a buy. Let me show you Newmont because they had earnings today. Their earnings were spectacularly, what I would say, boring. Uh, nothing really. I mean, their revenue up 1% year over year, blah, blah, blah. This is one week's worth of volume in one day. Why does that matter? Well, if you know VPA, you know. You know what I'm talking about. Like, somebody had to catch that falling knife. Let's start on the hourly, because I like this hourly chart. Look at this. Look at this candle. Tight action. Bigger volume than all the rest of the other days. Volume, right? I mean, of course, this candle was a little bit of an anomaly, because look at this volume and price action. Somebody has stopping power. So this is G and again, keep in mind, GDX is kind of is going to be following Newmont. But what do we notice about the junior miners? We'll get that in a second. Well look at this. Huh. <laughs> Somebody's a buy-in. And what do we so GDX, right? Let's go back to it. Probably gonna see a similar pattern into the close. Whoa, what are you doing? And there it be. There it be, folks. BPA. Hello, volume price analysis. You can't fake volume. Volume is conviction. Volume is what? It's all that really matters. What price it at doesn't matter until somebody has the ability to do what? Stop the drop. Stop, stop the flop. Stop the pop. Whatever you want to call it. That's stopping power. What price? We don't know. I always tell people that. You just don't know. But you look for the volume. Now what? You've taken out the lows. Oh my gosh! Said this in a little, did a little um, live re or did a YouTube live. Said this is a lot. You've gone from forty-one to twenty-four, four reds in a row. You're due to bounce. You're due to bounce. Now again, doesn't necessarily mean you, you are. I'm, I'm not calling the long-term bottom. No, mm -mm -mm. that is probably coming when the Fed's pivot to what? Cutting rates. We're not even close. They're they're raising 75 basis points next on Wednesday. So they're not cutting. No, don't get it twisted. But it doesn't mean it can't bounce. And that's where, you know, somewhere in the I mean, three, 10, 15, 20% would take you to what? I mean, pray you get up to here, 28. That'd be a cool move because, again, you could play it through the J Nug and Nugget and all that stuff. GDXA, why did I buy Junior Miners? Well, guess what? They're not making new lows. I mean, it's really that simple. People were asking about that, and, I'm, and this isn't meant to be derogatory or inflammatory. It's just look at the charts. 
I see one making lower lows. I see one making higher lows. Hmm. Interesting. GDXJ looks way better. Hence playing JNUG, right? It looks better. You, you can't argue it. Someone said uh, head and shoulders pattern. I think you can see it. Do, 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 do. What do you see here? Uh, maybe hmm. you can see left shoulder, right shoulder. Here's your head. Maybe not so clear, but you can see it on the daily. Here's the left shoulder. Here's the head. Here's the right shoulder. If it's a head and shoulders bottom, it should do what? Resolve higher. Let's get into some of the miners real quick. Again, all these should pop. It's just pick your poison. AG, you clearly have a floor here. Closed above the floor, right? Yep, 650, whatever, got a hold. AEM, we saw some red flags on this one today. <laughs> Keep in mind when you zoom out on AEM, you're back at the extremes. Here, again, high volume highs and high volume lows. This is an extreme here in the 39, 38. Let me zoom in onto the intraday action. What do you see? Look at that volume. Now again, you didn't see volume at any point. Remember we talk about this. It's like, Dan, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? The volume, the volume, the volume. Do you say the volume? Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, it's really that simple. Now we know the market makers are playing games here. They're getting involved. They know how to squeeze the sh snot out of someone. I mean, maybe all these stops are under 40 and you're just blowing them out, 39, whatever. Here you go. Somebody has stopping power. Think about it. This thing has been, and this is where I always say stopping power. We'll look at the volume, yada, yada, yada. What have you noticed? Doot, doot, doot. Stair steps down. Stair step. What? Who Who's showing up down here? It ain't you and me. I ain't stopping that. I ain't buying down here. And they clearly were happy to buy it 40. And they're buying it at 40, 20. And they're buying it at 40. <laughs> I mean, again, pfft, lower the prices. Someone got even more aggressive. Do you see a pattern here about miners? Why I'm looking for a, I don't know, swing, scalp, whatever you want to call it. Just trying to make a few bucks here and there. That's all we're trying to do. <laughs> really that simple. NFGC, again, all these charts are going to look pretty similar. Retesting the lows, holding somewhere in the threes. Pass, somebody bought a bunch of this on the Discord room. Nice work. The volume on the daily is fine. Again, but this is exhausting. I mean, we talked about this could be a bottoming signal. Not necessarily like the bottom, 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 but a bounce bottom. But what do you look at the intraday? I'm assuming you saw something to trigger your buys. Let's take a look at the 10 minute. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Buying action. Big green candle, big volume. Not scared. Someone's clearly not scared to buy. This is what's, I mean, again, if you look at the, now, this is where it gets interesting. You zoom out. Here's your capitulation. Here are your higher lows. I like it. It kind of looks like the spy bottom double tap, right? Here's your blowout. Double tap. Keep it simple. Again, we don't... We try to do what the market is doing, not what we want. And at a certain point, when people have been buying miners, and I'm like, please, just wait. And they're like, what are you waiting for? Now you're seeing what we're waiting for. Now, does this mean it has to go for a moonshot? No. Remember, the seasonality, everything in itself says what? There's a bounce. How strong? How big? How fast? We don't know. It really depends. And again, if the metals are down in front of the feds, which they clearly are. I mean, they've gotten absolutely curb stomped. Like, this is not soft. I mean, you might get a retest of the lows. You might not. That's, that's just how it is. Because what I'm assuming, again, it's probably going to look a lot like December, mid-December. FOMC, where you got a day where it's just like, and again, remember, that was making new lows and a big trend. Like, this has been going on for a while, right? So my guess is what? Worst case scenario, know your lows, and we could just start this little, look at that. Was that a professional gap? I mean, again, remember I talked about days, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Would you take nine days of an uptrend? I'll do it, 21 up to whatever you're, target 25 i'll take seven eight nine days of up on the miners because let's go look at um what the gdxj did then again just bouncing around i know this is not traditional but what would that go went from 38 one two three four five. again not sloppy again 10 15 percent depending on the name 
I really think the GDXJ, though, which is interesting because, again, you go from 52 down to 29 junior minors. For the big boys to do well, they're going to have to start shopping. they got to buy the little guys. We'll see. I don't know for anything for sure. I try to warn people that I think there's a bounce coming. What did the GDX do in December? Let's just look real quick. Again, you went from your bottom of 29. Nine days later, you're up in the 32s. 10%, 10, 15%. Seems safe. Look at that chart. I mean, that's just utter beat down. Uh, material names. Again, maybe these hold up pretty well. They clearly did. X said probably going to get up to here. This action, again, the easy money's been made, but roll your stops. Do whatever you need to do. New core. Looks okay. Talked about getting up into this old range. Nice pullback. Doji. Eh, I don't know. This is where I say the easy money. I mean, again, like, imagine you're down here in the metals to play up. And people say, oh, they've been lagging so hard. And it's like, I know. Something sneaky. Because you got the volume at the bottom. That's the difference. Valet, double bottom. Again, I said it probably could bounce. I, it did. Nice work. If you did, I didn't do anything. But how? what's your upside? I don't know. 13s, 14s. We'll see. Never know. Maybe commodities go on a quick little run back. Because, again, natural gas. I want to talk about it. We'll get there. Holding up well, CCJ said, I, I don't trust this long term other than for a scalp. It's no different than playing the miners for nine, ten days. We'll see. August is obviously going to be bearish as crap, probably, in my opinion. Doesn't mean this couldn't get back up to 24, 25. Oh, what is next on the list of arrow? People talking about buying this, and it's like, eh, it's got a bottom. Maybe it bounces. I, I don't know. I just, not that excited about it. I mean, look at the monthly. It's this is pretty much a beat down, right? I think we should move on from arrow. I don't know. People are asking about copper. Just I mean you're at prices that make sense to bounce. I mean if oil, gas, everything pops a little bit. Interesting to see um materials names like the ag names start popping. I mean all weekend all I read was food shortages are coming. And again, I think they actually are based on the action. But this is strong. Uh, he always likes this stuff. I mean, I got shaken out right before it lifted off. I have no problem owning this stuff. I mean, it looks okay. CF, this is the one that I think is actually the winner. Remember, we talked about the volume here. Look at that. Whoa. Huh. Again, the better acting volume price analysis trades. Look what they do. They end up doing better. Notice the theme here. Again, we talked about that. It was an anomaly. Small candle after a big drop, big volume. Look at that pop. Uh, AMD. Put this on the radar. Maybe to take some snags. It bounced back to the 8-day. Nice. I mean, again, I still think you can get up to the mid-90s. SMH talked about taking most of your profit on the Soxel. Not surprised it pulled back. Pulling back to the channel. 50-day area. Like a freaking boss in the 220s. Again, I think you can play the bounce up. I, I just risk-reward. Risk versus reward. If something bad happens, I got to be careful. That's, I mean, that's all I'm thinking. I, I don't know. I mean, you don't think about things unless you've been involved in them. And I've been in places where I got smoked cheddar. Apple chopping said that Apple led the market up. Now it's basing out. They've got earnings on what Thursday after the close. Again, maybe Friday. This is when pain starts for the bulls and tech. Uh, Meta, Snap got snapped. People were like, oh, where now? And it's like, mm, you got some 20-day action down here. Again, I'm not surprised it's pulling back. Probably going to be some short covering, rallying into the earnings. I mean, it seems logical. I mean, it's probably a 10, 15-point move here before earnings. Uh, let's throw IBM in there for you guys. We talked about getting shaken out. Doji, uh, tough. That's big volume. But you kept going lower. That's what's so hard sometimes is it can happen. The price action didn't confirm it this day. Definitely had the long wick, double bottom. Check, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, this thing, people, I, I've said this a thousand times. Like, think about it. The market bottom or peaked in November. This thing's actually acting really well. That's all I can really focus on. Roblox got stopped out of this and took my profits. Said, you know, I'm done with it. A nice little action here. Held a 20-day. Probably bounces. Worst case, 42. Maybe gets up to 50. Tesla, we talked about shorting this on Friday. Voila. Nice pullback. Now, again, it's hard to really short it. You see the reference up here. 
It's tough to short it if the market holds up. I think you, at worst you'll get a retest if you want to short it. 840. Does it drop? Don't know. Trying to be thoughtful. I, I, near term, I don't know. I mean, tech in itself, we talked about it. It's due to pull back. It's also due to pop. If earnings looks what? More bullish. Let's wrap it up with the EXP, get into oil stuff. Uh, EXPI, talked about this name. If you didn't get it at the lows, please don't chase it. Uh, UTHR, I mean, it's like everybody long junior biotech. This is a name that we talked about buying down here. You need to start taking profit. Talked about the retest. Now you have to be out. I mean, if you're not 100% out up here, I don't know what to tell you now down here. Maybe you get that test up there. Maybe you don't. I don't know. This is a probability game. What are the odds of it rising much after this monster move? Ugh, don't, I don't know. I can't advise you well on this. I, you got to take profits or they get taken. Oh, good oil. What did we say? You got to be careful. We talked about what? We talked about what? Probably going to come back into this trend line. Probably going to test 78, 80. Because again, let's let's pull up the, the biggest you know, elephant in the room. And this is what people are shorting at gas. And I'm like, whoa, you can't know. It's over the 618. It's making higher highs. This doesn't look bearish. Watch what happens when you get up into the 30s. Now you're getting close. Maybe that's when you start getting some action people are like oh i'm short an xop and it's like uh, i'm not short an xop no look at that man right back at the high i've said what i would not be surprised if you got back up 138 to 140 area because oil's holding up it's just it is what it is if you break this trend line i mean you do the math higher prices to come folks i mean it's not let's, let's actually move this trend down here because now it's looking really obvious i think you can get back up in here I don't. I'm not trying to be mean. That's just what it seems like. Exxon Mobil said, "You know, gotta leave it alone. Watch what happens. Now it's making higher highs. And that's not bearish." Let's roll through a few of the oil names just to see if we see any. What we see. EQT, a big name. Oh, that is not gonna help the XOP. That looks pretty strong. What do we say? It's looking, hmm. It gets, gets interesting when you get up here, isn't it? I mean, I think they have earnings this week. You're getting up there. Uh, PXD, I said it, it, it's lagging, but it popped today. Here we go. I feel like these names got some. Let's do some fibbies on them and see where we're at. Yeah, I mean, you get the. Mm -hmm. 240s, like we thought. Talked about that. Talked about 240s, possibly if it bounced on the previous recaps. Why, 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 why? Why not? Look at the. Look at this little sucker. You can see like there's a gap in between here, but we said this this high into this gap. I think it could, could, could test. That seems very likely. I hope this stuff helps. Again, I think a lot of people are learning that it's just all mindset. You know, it's like you have to act all the time. You have to trade all the time. You have to be on top of things and over trade. The goal is not to. I mean, I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. Is trading easy? I guess at times in times it won't be and again you're gonna miss out and there's gonna be things that happen in your life where you just you can't take trades and you know what you'll be fine just don't over trade that's that's the problem here and again if you have any of real estate questions I always like to remind people someone hit me up about a referral can't wait to help them out this is what we do I like real estate I love it because again if this is like the 70s and 80s look what prices of real estate did again if there's bottlenecks shortages on supplies the cost to build it is not going down it's going to sustain higher and that means what prices for houses are going to stay in these prices will probably go higher once demand kicks in imagine if they lower rates next year and you bought a house now next i don't know now meaning next three to six months you're probably buying at a low before the next move in housing inflation is real housing is the best hedge in my opinion now again how you handle it what you do where you buy it all mad changes but not changes just different again buy in good places you live in the panhandle of the you know you sunbelt of the country you're probably good you're up in the northeast you're in the midwest uh, i don't know you're in denver you definitely hit me up california might again i think at some point california might flip can't stay uh this bearish on california forever it's still an amazing state anyway Talk to you later. Hit me up if you got any questions. Stop by the Discord room. Link is in the description below. Take care.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, stop by the Discord room. A link is in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support more free content, your PayPal link is in the description as well. I appreciate your continued support of the channel.